Well, hey neighbors, welcome to the Shed Shop and this edition <clears throat> of Dr. Diagnostics. I have on my bench a steel MS-170 for neighbor Leonard. Neighbor Leonard has five saws total. He, we, I forgot to tell him that I charge a $50 Diag fee that is standard in this business. Um, oh, the date, sorry. Today is uh, Friday, um, February 16th. Uncle came home yesterday, February 15th. Uh, thus far today, I have recorded for you um, Dr. Diag how-to on an MS310 for neighbor Ross. He has elected to have his saw rebuilt. It had low compression. Uh, and then um, I just did an 029 Super for neighbor Leonard back here in the box. And unfortunately, we found an air leak. I'm glad I put it on record. But anyways, he decided to leave three of his five saws and gave me a $50 deposit. Uh, we started that 029 Super up when he was here, <clears throat> and it ran fine to me. Um, we didn't cut with it, but it ran fine. But unfortunately, the piston has a little bit of scoring. I don't know if it can just be re-ringed until I take the whole thing apart. Um, so I have to give him a quote on how much it's going to cost to fix that saw, and he'll have to decide. Um, I charge $150 labor on the 1127 series for the rebuild. And then if I have to break it in, I usually charge additional labor. It takes me like 10 hours to break a saw in usually, and I only charge... $75 for that if I do a lot of times I don't charge neighbors break in labor because I use their saw to do my chairs And so it benefits me and I can say hey Well, I didn't have to put wear into my saws, but all the fuel I use and everything else um, I don't usually pass that on to my customer. That's probably why I'm freaking sinking you guys um, But because people get mad and I don't like conflict when people say I'm doing them dirty when I don't I get so upset like there's this guy 775 hunter. I think is his name on eBay uh, he's a seller, and he bought an MS-362 handle from me, and I listed that on my phone. Okay, so when I put, there's a crack in the handle, it put Nick. Um, but he claims the handle was broken in two spots, and I looked at my pictures, and it was not broken where it's now broken. Okay, I was honest in my description. Uh, he offered me $40 for it, and I accepted his offer. Um, he left me positive feedback, and then all of a sudden, he sent me this very irate message saying he's fuming, calling me a liar, saying I did him dirty, saying I'm dishonest, and I hate when people do that, you guys, because I am not that way. I am just not that way, okay? Um, but I know you can't please everybody, but I try so hard, I think that there's no reason there should be issues. So I replied to this guy's nasty message explaining to him, my uncle's in the hospital, I'm in financial ruins, uh, I have severe health problems that are that are just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And uh, you had no right to come at me like that. You don't have to assume I did you dirty just because the world's like that. It says in the description that it was cracked. I've looked at the pictures and I don't see where it's broken. So I basically told him, I have no problem making this right. Would you like a replacement handle or would you like a refund? I said, but we cannot proceed until you please apologize. I asked him politely, please apologize. You did me dirty sending me that message, 775 Hunter. Uh, uh, Doug, I think is his name. I even called him, text messaged him trying to make it right, telling them that that's the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. When a neighbor thinks I did them dirty, when I didn't. And they don't even give me a chance to make it right. And then he reported me to eBay, uh, saying I'm a liar and I'm a deceptive seller. Uh, that's totally not true. And fortunately, eBay knows better because I communicate with eBay on the phone quite a bit um, about my account and everything else. Uh, but that being said, um, everything is getting stressful because now I have to tell another neighbor that, you know, it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars if you want this all fixed. Um... I thought that was going to be an easy one. I hate when I get a saw on my bench. I think I'm just going to service it. And I go the extra mile for my neighbor and do a vacuum pressure test just to make sure there's no issues. And I didn't even look at the piston before we did the vacuum pressure test on either of those saws. I forgot to. Um, but nonetheless, people accuse uh, mechanics a lot of doing them dirty. Because most people that do this business, they do people dirty. They say they rebuild saws that they've just gotten running and didn't even cut with. In my opinion, I tell you guys all the time, if you don't cut with a saw... I'm sorry, mechanic shops. Hey, listen, I love, I love, love, love some of the guys that show their work. They work for a shop. I'm not going to mention by name because I don't want to upset nobody. But just starting a saw in your shop and running it. I see so many people buy used saws that start and run and they take them home and you put it to wood and it, and it bogs out, dies, all kinds of different shit. If you do not cut with a saw, in my opinion, you have no right to charge your neighbors how much you're charging them, your customers. You have no right. Put their saw to wood. And the problem is guys that work at a shop their bosses don't provide them wood. So they can only do what their boss allows them to do. You know, they have a job to do. They have to make money. And, and I just disagree with that process, personally, me. That's just me. You know, that's just my opinion. I'm not speaking down on anybody or speaking... Uh, 
Oh, uh, that's Chris McGregor asking me how much I'm charging for an 026. Uh, I'll have to message him back here shortly. Um, but nonetheless, you guys, um, I am recording this again. And then when I'm done with his other two saws, I've got his 170 and his 250. The 170, uh, we started it up. He says it won't idle. So I'm hoping, again, it's just a tune-up and not a freaking rebuild. Uh, no air leaks. I'm really hoping these two saws are just minor. The 250, I know nothing about. We didn't try and start it. He didn't tell me whether it runs or not. Um, but, uh, that being said, um, yeah, there's just a lot going on and my mind is all over the place. Um, um, I just know without you guys, I wouldn't keep going. I would just say fuck it and quit. But you guys, the support, uh, is, is why I hashtag persevere. Okay. Um, I had to open a new credit card to buy uncle's medications, $268, uh, for his medications this month. And, and that's what he needs every month. That's, that's with insurance, you guys. That's with his insurance. That's how many meds he has to be on right now. Um, and there's six to eight weeks for his wound to heal, so he can't go back to work. And so it's all on me. I have to cook for my uncle. I have to take care of him. Uh, I have to make sure he's trying to keep his sugar right. I have to remind him all the time to take his meds and do his insulin and this and that and this and that and even take a bath. Um, don't know what's wrong with my 54-year-old uncle's brain, but he's like a child. Um, but I love him very much. Um, and he loves me very much and despite the issues we have we are trying very 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 hard every day to improve ourselves for each other to make our relationship better so that we don't argue so that we don't fight it's very rare that me and my uncle argue and fight but we we do have lots of conversations about what's wrong um and so you know my uncle is um he's pretty unique he's like me he's a very unique person um i'm just grateful to have him and uh, we're going to bring more content with him uh, in the future, hopefully, so you guys can get to know him better. He is very grateful for all your support. Uh, I have a little video I put out. I couldn't do it into a short because when I don't record the video on the YouTube app, uh, it zooms it in way much when you turn it into a short and you can't see nothing. So I need to get better at remembering that um, because shorts get more views. Um, so that being said, uh, let's have some coffee. I'm going to turn you down to the bench. We're going to get to work on Neighbor Leonard's MS-170 and hope we have good news for him that this is going to be a cheap service saw uh, and we don't have to rebuild it because these ones most of the time are not worth rebuilding. I only charge $100 labor to rebuild these and sometimes I do a hundred and quarter or 150 when I break them in um, because I try and make it worth it for the customer and since I know these saws so well, I can do it fast. Okay, so let's get to work, damn it, neighbors. Okay, so uh, we are recording this one on the Samsung Galaxy S10. All my other videos are on the other phone, and I thought, well, even though this one takes a lot longer to upload videos to the internet, um, I have a lot of content i got to get you guys. And so uh, after I do Leonard's two saws, despite the fact that I want to list parts on eBay and do things to try and make money, um, I want to make sure you guys get what you deserve, and that is continuous content. Even if it's not perfect content, I have some videos that the view is dark because we're still trying to learn the stand Blanche bought us. Right now I am not using it because the light on it causes things to be dark and it's very difficult uh, to get the flex mount working right. And so for sake of time, I've not been using it the past couple of videos. I do like it. It was a good gift, Blanche. Thank you very much. And I will be making more use of it. I just have to get better at understanding how to set it up so everything looks good. Okay, get Randall's tag out of there so you guys don't see his info. Uh, and let's get to work. First thing we're going to do, we're just going to debar this thing to make it easier to work on. <clears throat> and as I debar it, I'm going to kind of set the chain tensioner a little tighter so when I put it back on, it's not as hard. That's right. Steel did us dirty and put it in the front on the 170s sometimes. Okay, here we go. Not perfect, but at least it will be closer when I'll go to... Uh, it's out of track here. All right. Well, to hell with it. We'll deal with that later then. I guess it doesn't want us to do it right now. So, again, you guys, I really appreciate all you guys. Um, I can't I can't sit here and mention you all, but there's so many of you. And especially I have a couple of new guys that uh, have found my videos in the middle of the night when they can't sleep because they suffer from either pain or a mind that won't shut off like me. Um... And they come across my videos and they tell me how much they appreciate what I'm doing and how they can relate to my pain and my brain and everything else. And, and uh, so I am I feel really grateful that I can provide uh, a service, so to speak, to make your lives better. And uh, it also makes my life better because I actually feel like 
I'm not worthless um, some days. A lot of days I feel worthless. Uh, his sprocket's good. That's good. I don't know why we're taking that off, but we did, damn it. See, because I'm distracted. Anyways, <laughs> we'll leave that there for now. Let's get our damn hood off. And I'm guessing he's going to need it. Yeah, see, the air filter is disgusting, and it's the cheap kind. So, but these just that shit, Rob Weaver. Uh, and then let's go ahead and go into our fuel tank. I need to watch more Greasy Shop Rag because he's like a diagnostics king. Uh, the fuel does smell bad. I can already tell the fuel line looks bad, too. It just looks really squishy. Uh, where are my needle nose? Let's get this out of the way. This is bad fuel, so we're, we're not going to save it. It doesn't smell good. Damn, these don't ever come out this hard. Wow. Okay, let me drain the fuel, neighbors. All right, got our fuel out. Let's go ahead and check up our pickup body. Check out our pickup body uh, and feel our fuel line. Uh, it does feel terrible, actually. Fuel filter seems okay. I usually blow through those, and I can tell whether they're restricted or not on the steels. Um, we will go ahead real quick and just pressure test our cooperator. I got to get the right fitting here. I cannot wait until I have my new shop set up. Everything is messy over here. Uh, I just had that damn fitting for this, and I don't know where it went, which stresses me out too. This one's too small for these fuel lines. Yes, it is. I have the larger one, and I don't know where it is, damn it. I just took it off earlier and I thought I put it I thought I put it in my bin or in my uh, case here for my damn vet pressure tester but I'm just not seeing it damn it okay this one might work it's not as big but it might work yep okay it will have to work let's go ahead pressure so about 10 pounds Okay, we'll just watch that for a second. Uh, I'm chain smoking today, you guys. I'm so sorry. I need to stop smoking in the videos. It's really bad. Um, it, it To me, it's just a, a YouTuber shouldn't be smoking in his videos. And so please forgive me for that. I know I'm doing you guys dirty smoking cigarettes while I do footage. But I just am a lot going on, guys. I'm, I'm stressed and I'm overwhelmed and I'm frustrated. And I can't order inventory because I have no money. And having to keep living on credit cards... For two years, I didn't pay any credit card interest, and I earned cash back on all my cards. I would use them and then pay them off right away to get the cash back benefits. But now the credit card companies are getting me um, because my business is failing. Um, I've been looking at saws on Marketplace. Other people selling MS250s for like 250 or asking anyways, $250, $300 in the states surrounding me. And I know a guy in Kentucky that sells a lot of power saws. He says they're rebuilt, but they're not. He just buys saws, gets them running, and sells them. I know a lot of people have had issues with his saws. And he charges like eight fifty dollars for a, a, a mediocre uh, 044. And so I put mine up for seven fifty, dollars and I think that's a fair price, honestly, with a warranty and everything else in my area. I think that's a very fair price um, with a 25-inch bar and chain. Okay, our carburetor doesn't leak. Um and I've never had any problems getting like 300 to 325 for my 025s and MS250s. Um, but even dropping the price on those to 275 with warranty, they're not selling. I've tried to sell them for 250 as is. They're not selling. Um, and so it's just the only saws I see selling online are ones that are dirt cheap. And uh, I've dropped my prices as low as I'm honestly willing to reasonably drop or to drop them. Okay, so we're going to have to go ahead and look at the condition of our carburetor because the salt doesn't idle. And I am guessing uh, the carburetor is gooped up. And then, like I said, um, I always try to do, even though uh, the manuals will tell you that it's absolute last resort to do a vacuum pressure test, you always check fuel delivery system first. But I like to just make sure I know, do I have a damn air leak? Okay, so hold for this one. You just pull your trigger, hold this, and then you can slide your throttle lever out of the way. And then once you have your air filter housing off, you pull your choke lever, and you can pull your carburetor back just a little bit. Okay, maybe. Uh, yeah, just a little bit, and then you can slide your choke lever out. And then um, it's easier on this model to go ahead and pop your um, kill switch out and slide it out like that. Okay, and then just uh, pull your push your wire through the outside there to get that out of your way 
And if you have fuel in your tank, make sure you either loosen your cap or drain your fuel because when you take this fuel line off, you will get shot in the eye with fuel. Okay, so let's get that out of there. Look how freaking filthy this is, you guys. Wow. Okay, we'll move that out of our way. Um, we're going to put a rubber, rubber stopper in there and spray some of that schmutz off. Like Greasy Shop Rag says. I'm... I watch his videos more than anybody, you guys. When I hurt and I'm in bed and I don't feel like editing or doing anything and I'm doing you guys dirty by not loving you enough to edit footage, I watch Greasy Shop Rag a lot. He's a freaking mechanical genius. I like how he takes the saws at the beginning of his video and he goes, boom, boom. Okay, Saw, you're my bitch now. That's basically what I say, what I hear him saying, even though he's not saying it. Anyways, I'm going to leave that in there for now. Uh, I want to look at what our spark plug looks like, because I keep forgetting to do that part. And then we'll pull our muffler. Oh, goodness. I hate being weak. Okay, it is a BPMR7A, so that is fine for this saw. A 6A would be fine for this saw. Um, not too, too bad. I'd like to see a little bit lighter tan opposed to brown. It looks like it's running a little bit lean, but not terrible, okay? Actually, we're going to look into our spark plug port here. The cylinder looks good, nice and shiny, no scratches. Now, we've got some carbon built up on our piston, but not terrible. So, next, we will go ahead and pull off our muffler with the two 8 millimeters. Okay, and this is where I have to hurt my neck really bad. Oh, sorry guys, it hurts. This hurts really bad. Uh, verge of tears pain, honestly, <clears throat> but I have no choice. I can't let my uncle not have his medicines, and I can't let my, I can't, it took me years, it took me a decade to get my life back together. Uh, the past three and a half years has been just hard, hard, hard work to try and get my credit back right. Stay off of drugs. Um, and I really thought I was doing well, but the past few months, everything is just falling apart. I can't, I can't seem to get anything right. I've had a couple of complaints from guys on eBay. One guy said he didn't get his package or said he got an empty package um, and immediately left me negative feedback on eBay. And that shit affects me more than it does most people. Most people can just brush it off and say whatever. I can't. I just can't. Okay. So let's get a look at our piston here. This exhaust port should be open way more. Okay, piston looks fine. Um, it's It doesn't have any machine lines left in it. So we might check compression on this salt. But for now, we're going to go ahead and do our vacuum pressure test. Just to see if we have air leaks or not. Okay, so our eighth inch rubber here. We'll put that on. And then put our muffler back on to seal it. And then I think I have, yes, I have a flange for this one, this the uh, OEM steel flange for the carburetor side. Sometimes I forget what flanges I have. I have like three more steels that I need to buy, but I just haven't had the money. There's so many things I need to buy. I need to order inventory, but it's like Meteor. Why, why do I want to keep ordering it? Because most of it's just sitting on the damn shelf. When I first started selling Meteor, it was going like crazy. <laughs> And then I had a really slow phase, and then it picked up really good again. So I spent three thousand um, dollars, which I I normally only do fifteen hundred uh, is the minimum they require me to put in. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just I'm selling like one meteor product a week, if that. And so I've got three thousand dollars that I can't recoup right now. And um, yeah, like I said, you guys, it's. I'm trying to keep my head up, but I'm struggling. I'm not going to lie. Uh, a lot of people will say men don't cry. Well, I do. I have no problem showing my feelings and emotions. And um, I cry a lot over all the stress in my life. And how I feel like a failure. How my business isn't succeeding. They took my disability for a while. They gave it back. Because a lot of people, they don't understand. They see me doing this stuff and they think you're not disabled. But they don't see the days and weeks and sometimes even a month that I spend in bed unable to do anything. My uncle taking care of me. Um, okay, this flange sometimes doesn't seal up that impulse down there. 
So I might end up going through the spark plug if we don't get a good seal. Okay, we need our two 8 mils from our carburetor. Where did they go? These are from our muffler. Oh, I put them backwards. That's okay. We'll just use these for now. Okay, we're going to have to put our spark plug back in. Okay, there we are. Okay, there's that. Yeah, and that thing's worn out too. Not that old. Okay. Uh, spark plug. Sorry guys, so distracted. So distracted because I'm, I always think about, boy, am I going to be able to do anything tomorrow? I think about when I'm done with these two saws, am I going to have the strength and the energy and the encouragement and the patience and the time and the working internet and the working phone and, and technology not fighting me and going against me to uh, edit footage? Am I going to do a good job? Am I going to be watching my videos and thinking this is too embarrassing to post and, and delete it like I do a lot? Don't know, neighbors. I don't quite know how to explain what it's like having a bipolar mind, an OCD mind. Um, uh, I have situational anxiety and situational depression, which means I don't deal with change well. I don't deal with unknowns. I always try to plan, 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 um, like for phone calls and stuff so that I don't get stressed out on people and... and I have a bad temper, which I hate. And Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself, for no man has ever hated his own flesh. But this man hates his own flesh. I hate myself most of the time. And so it makes it hard to love you guys like I'm supposed to. Go ahead and try and pull a vacuum, see what happens. Seven and a half. We're going to watch that for about five minutes. Go get your snacks and your drinks, neighbors. Okay. It's only been a minute, but I keep forgetting. While we're doing that, we can always open up our carburetor. Smuts and dust off it as you can. Okay. All it takes is one tiny grit of dirt in your carburetor to make it not work right. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and remove our uh, pump diaphragm. Can't remember, is this the pump or the metering side? I think this is the metering side. No pump side. Yeah, that 100% needs replaced. I can already tell. Yeah, very crinkly, very stiff. Okay. Uh, so far, our vacuum looks like it's holding, but we're going to keep watching it for a few more minutes. Okay, trying to get this off without it sticking. Sometimes it sticks. A little bit of it sticking on us. So what I do with that is I just take me a little screwdriver. And it's got it's got grooves here, so you don't want to sand it or anything. Okay, you can use chemicals, but I usually don't on these because, I don't know, just stay humble and scrape it. Uh, plus, I don't have the money to get more. Uh, I forget the name of the damn alcohol that I need to get, but it's like $28 for a gallon on Amazon. And my Amazon credit card is maxed out, so I can't get anything on Amazon unless I use another credit card. And, well, guess what, neighbors? They're all maxed out. I only have $79 in the bank. That's uh, very bad. $79 and uh, over $15,000 in credit card debt. And I owe nearly $15,000 on the new shed shop. And I'm making like uh, $200 a month if I'm lucky. Um, I make about $25 to $30 a month on eBay. I don't do very good on eBay because my videos don't get a lot of views, which is okay. I keep making them because there's a select handful of rock stars like you, Ski Boot, and you, Robert Dancho, and you, Jonathan Luna, and Sarah Weaver, and Rob Weaver, and uh, who else comments all the time? Uh, Justin B. Uh, our metering diaphragm is stiff too. Uh, yeah, we're losing vacuum. Damn, that sucks. Uh, I don't want this saw to have a fucking air leak. This sucks. This sucks, this sucks, this sucks. This is why you don't let your saw sit with fuel in them all the time, guys. This is why you don't let your shit sit for years without starting it. Five, six, seven, and a half. I'll go ahead and start watching that. Um, Shall I just vent while we watch that? Some of you guys say you really like me talking about my problems and shit. You like me showing you my frustrations and everything else that comes along with this right now it's discouragement it's i want to be able to just have this saw on the bench service it and have it done so that i can make a quick you know 50 60 dollars hopefully uh but it never seems to work that way most of the shit that comes to me needs rebuilt i hate it 
I hate it because then my neighbors think I'm just trying to do them dirty and make money. And that's not the case. That's honestly, it's sad. Sometimes I record my, my work because uh, I don't want to get accused of getting or doing people dirty and lying. Okay, so. But even with footage, people like uh, Bo Portwine, who floods his 028 out, claims that somehow the saw I started when his wife picked it up was not his grandfather's saw uh, by the time it got to his house. So somehow I must have followed her and snuck into the trunk or I teleported a different 028 into his trunk. And I have that saw cutting for like over an hour on the channel. And he claims it doesn't even start. You know, the vacuum, uh, the pressure's holding. But we need vacuum to hold as well because if vacuum's not holding, that means we got to go test our crankshaft seals and put oil on them while we have a vacuum and see if it pulls the oil in. Pressure isn't going anywhere. It's holding steady. Yeah, it's holding steady. I'm going to... Ah, uh, damn it. I hate when I do that. I hit that lever. Damn. It sucks. Now we got to start all over. That happens so much. I hate how easy it is to hit this thing right down here. I wish it was like a... Okay, now I'm up to 8 pounds. That will be fine. This saw can handle that. Uh, I'm going to let it sit for 5 or 10 minutes, you guys, and take a break and just kind of compose myself here, okay? You know what I was just thinking? Jimbus hasn't commented on a video in a long time. And last I heard, he hadn't had a chance because of the cold weather to run his 038. He's still on my board because I don't know if he's satisfied or not. And that's the other thing. I'm terrified. What if something went wrong with his saw? He waited so long for that saw and he paid a very fair price for it. And uh, what if something went wrong? What if he's mad at me and not telling me? You know, that's the kind of shit I think about you guys. That's how my brain works. I don't know why I care about people so much and what they think about me. Uh, you shouldn't care what others think about you unless you're like, I guess a Christian uh, should care because you're supposed to emanate the character of Christ. But I, I want people to be happy with the products I provide and the service I provide. I really, really see we've lost half a pound. So now we are leaking when we get up to eight. So I just, I'm going to give this like 10 or 15 minutes. I want to see what happens. Okay. There's been times, you know, just because neighbors uh, assume I'm trying to do them dirty that I, um, if their saw, if I tell them their saw needs rebuilt, I'll just put the whole saw back together. A lot of dealers and shops, if you don't have your saw worked on beyond the diagnostics, they just put all this shit in a bag, tie it to your saw and give it back to you like that. I never do that. I always put the saw back together. Um, I try so hard, you guys. I try so hard to, to do things right and to make sure I'm doing my neighbors right because when I was on drugs uh, at the end of my business before I got run over and my life fell apart for like the 15,000th time, uh, in 2014, uh, I was doing people dirty. I was saying that I rebuilt saws to a level that I did not and selling them on eBay. Um, I never got any negative feedbacks, but just I knew I lied. And um, I guess the reason I care so much now is because I know that's not who I am. Um, and uh, yeah, I've just never fit in anywhere, you guys. And... Just, um, I know I have a temper, but I have an incredibly good heart for people. I care about people. And again, I know I shouldn't care what people think, but I want people to know the truth that I am trying my best. I try to save people money. Um, I'm not perfect. I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, sometimes I, I do, um, have the option to, uh, give somebody a fair discount, but if I know they have money, I don't. I don't discount them. I try and discount people I know that are struggling financially. And that's not really fair because just because somebody drives an $80,000 truck and owns a business doesn't mean they have money. Uh, they could be like me and try to start out on their own and be sinking and, and barely clinging, barely clinging to life essentially, uh, barely clinging to paying your bills, barely clinging to be able to have food. I'm fasting right now. Uh, not really necessarily fully for religious purposes, but because I know one person eating in the house opposed to two brings down my food bill. And I don't have to fear my uncle not being able to eat because he's diabetic and he has to have a very balanced diet um, in order for his health to be okay because he almost died on me. And uh, my uncle works overnight, so we, we don't have a lot of time that we spend together. But just knowing that he's in his bedroom sleeping there, you know, um, makes home home. When he's not here, it's not home. 
Uh, it's just not the same. Um, it's really interesting because I grew up my whole life without having my uncle. Yeah, I'm telling you guys my life now and making the video longer and making it harder to edit. And when I watch this, I probably won't post it. But you know what? Maybe I will. If you're hearing this, then I changed my mind and posted it. Uh, I didn't know my uncle as a child. I met him once as a child. And the vision I was given of my uncle's character basically is is honestly not true. It's not accurate. A lot of things are. He's lazy. He's selfish. He can be very inconsiderate. Um, but he doesn't have the temper that he was portrayed to have. Unless it's it's very rarely does his temper come out in a horrible way. It has two or three times in the two years we've been together, living together. But I mean, I basically moved here without hardly knowing my uncle. I went most of my childhood and most of my adulthood without hardly ever even speaking to him. Only ever saw him once face to face when I was nine or ten years old. Only had like two or three or maybe five very short, hey, how you doing, uh, Facebook Messenger messages. Um, knew nothing about my uncle and just... My grandmother died and my uncle's never been alone and she wanted me to come take care of him. And so I did. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, people die every day. But uh, if I were to lose my uncle, I don't know what the fuck I would do. Honestly, guys. And so I just have to keep persevering and keep pushing. Because when I'm down and out, uh, my uncle, he pulls, tries a lot of times, not always, um, but he tries very hard to be there for me. And if I need help with something, um, if I don't feel like going to the store, he will go like we had a promise. I very rarely drink beverages, adult beverages, but once in a great while I do. And if I have even one sip, I can wake my uncle up in the middle of his sleep, in the middle of the day, in the middle of the night, does not matter if I want something from the store. And I will say, Uncle, will you please go? And he will, just so I don't drive with alcohol on my breath or in my body. Uh, that's the kind of person he is. Let's see where we're at, neighbors. I need to shut the fuck up. Yeah, we've lost a pound, but it's been like six or seven minutes. And so now, I'm like, shit, what do we do? Let's go back to vacuum, because that was leaking faster. So, we'll go to eight instead of seven and a half. Five, six. Five, six and a half. Seven and a half. Okay, there's eight. And now I'm going to pause you guys and I'm going to go check on my uncle. Okay, had to put you guys on live support and back you up here. Uh, only been a couple minutes and we're already down to five pounds. So I'm going to switch back to pressure and hopefully we're just leaking at our attachment. I'm going to be really upset if this guy, all three of this guy's saws need rebuilt. I just can't handle it. I don't want to have to tell my neighbor his saws are all going to need rebuilt. Because then he's not going to want to do it, and he's probably going to think I did him dirty. That I'm lying to him, just trying to make money, like a lot of people do. Everybody assumes that everybody's dirty, because a lot of people in the world are shitty. I don't see any leaks around our fitment here. It can be sometimes hard on this one, where it leaks at the impulse. Damn, this sucks. Really sucks, you guys. I just want to have simple saw work. I'm trying to check for human error. I don't see anything presenting anywhere yet. So, we will go ahead and pull our clutch. Now I'm really discouraged. sucks I'll try once with our thing here without putting rope in and stuff see if it comes off easy it did so we'll check this crankshaft seal and as much of the gasket as we can get to I hate having the tear saws this down for diagnostics for a measly 50 freaking dollars for hours of work I hate it I don't see nothing on this side. I don't know why. Oh, there's bubbles. I see bubbles at our fitment. I see bubbles at our fitment right here. This fucking hose. I have to cut it every time I use it, it seems. It's ridiculous. Already lost half a pound. 
No more bubbles there. But I'm just going to verify. I mean, I don't know what else to do. I don't want to miss an air leak and have my neighbor's shit go back home and not run right and blow up on them. And then I'll get accused of doing something wrong. So, we're going to go to the other side as well. Tear this all the way down, I guess. Chainsaw Redeemer can't never have a job be simple. I don't know why I get the shittiest saws to work on. I should just do what shops do and just get them running. Make sure they run and then send them out as is. Not warranty my work, etc, etc. But I don't like doing that. So to get this off, you got four T27s. You have to take your gas cap off, your oil cap off. I'm sorry, neighbors. I'm trying to stay encouraged, but this is frustrating. How much time I'm having to put into saws and finding air leaks everywhere on my neighbor saws and fucking low compression and everything else. <sighs> having to go through all this work. And then a lot of times they don't want it rebuilt, so I have to put it all the way back together. Uh, and then a lot of times I go through all this and I find out it was freaking human error. It was just an attachment was leaking. Where is my damn 13 mil? Here it is. Or something else, and I hate it. But, like I said, I don't like taking chances of having air leaks that I miss. Just to assume it might be just my attachment. This saw won't idle. Damn, that nut is on there. Shit. This is a composite flywheel and these things strip so easy. It doesn't want to come off. So, unfortunately, oh, I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting very frustrated. Check our uh, intake boot here. Spray on our gasket some. More around our muffler hookup. Our muffler bolts. I'm not finding it. I don't want to break that fucking flywheel. I only have one. And if it shears, I can't charge the customer. Especially when I'm using an impact. So, we're going to put some rope in the damn cylinder to get our flywheel. Oh, shit. See what I did, neighbor? See? This is my life. This is what happens. You do dumb shit like this. I do myself dirty. I hate when fucking I get... Every saw I have come in is full of just oil and gas every time. I'm going to start telling people they have to drain their saws before they bring them in. Craziness. Uh, sorry, guys. So sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Doing everybody dirty. Just because I can't find a damn air leak. This sucks. I just want one saw to just be a simple service. I mean, I just, I can't tell you how long it's been since I've had a saw that was just a simple service or a simple car rebuild or something simple. Again, it seems like the only freaking saws I get are ones that need fully rebuilt. I hate it. That's why I can't make any damn money. Everything is just going wrong all the time. I'm sinking, you guys. I'm sinking. I most likely will not put this on the internet. <sighs> can't, even, can't even focus anymore. I'm tired and I hurt so bad. I don't think I'm going to do his other saw tonight. I just, uh, I'm not encouraged enough. I just, I'm overwhelmed. Just ready to quit. I just want to make my credit card debt back and be done and go to a reclusive life. Just grow a little bit of food if I can. And just shut myself off from the world. That's what I feel like doing. That's what I feel like doing. That's what I wish I could do. That scrunch is beat up. I can't use it. Uh, try one more time with the impact. Fuck it. 
I got another flywheel I can give him if it break it. Oh well. If I can find my damn socket. Ah, oh, damn it. Grabbed the wrong one. Can't even think straight anymore. I feel like the crankshaft is moving. I can't tell. I just can't tell. Damn it. Why don't I have a scrunch that fits this? Damn it. There we go. Yeah, it's not it's not gonna come off. This fucking thing won't come off. This is my fucking life though. I just can't ever have anything be simple. I hate this shit. I try so hard. I'm trying so fucking hard, guys. So hard. And I hate these little saws. The combustion chambers are so ignorant. <sighs> Oh, fuck. Whew. Whew. Holy shit. I'll bet you this flywheel sheared, and I'm going to have to replace it because I used an impact on it. Seventy five percent probably sheared. Okay, it's not fucking fortunately, but yeah, look at all the oil around this crankshaft seal. I'll bet you that's where our fucking leak is. Look at all that oil. But I'm discouraged because I have to tell this guy, so far, two of the three damn saws he bought me, if he wants them fixed, are gonna, this one, you can go buy a new one for $225 in this area. By the time all the little stupid parts that need replaced and everything get replaced, it's not worth it. And so I spent three and a half, four hours to make fifty dollars. Yeah, you can just hear it. You can literally god damn it. I just pushed the fucking button again. I hate this thing. Everything's a mess. Nope. It's not there. Are you shitting me? Where the fuck is the leak? I can hear it. Probably on the goddamn attachment again. Cut this fucking hose again. Every time I use it, I have to cut the end. Fuck me. Did me dirty on your hose, Mighty Vac. I've cut a fucking three foot of hose so far, vacuum pressure testing saws. I gotta find a better way to do this with the fucking hose, man. It's just not working out. And now I can't get the pressure up. God damn it. Because I don't have a spark plug in. Why don't you guys tell me? Shit. See? I'm just so overwhelmed now. So overwhelmed. I so wanted to have his three saws done. I just wanted them to be simple services. You know? Simple rebuild a carburetor. Put a new air filter on. Uh, and make my $50 for an hour and a half of work. But no. Now I got to hopefully make my $50. And if this guy's an asshole to me, I'll just simply tell him, well, just... Come pick up your saws, no charge. Because I'd rather that than be treated like shit like a lot of people treat me. Get treated like shit by a lot of my fucking customers. I'm out of water. I'll be back, neighbors. This one's a rough one. Shall we try again? Obviously, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. We have a fucking air leak that I cannot find. I can hear it, but I can't fucking find it. I just can't find it, you guys. I cannot find it. It sounds like it's coming from my Mighty Vac, dude.
No, I can't hear it. I don't hear it no more. I cannot believe I'm having to go through all this and can't figure out where the fuck our leak is. I hate these little saws. I just don't see no bubbles coming anywhere. I can fucking hear it though. I hear it. I can't find it. We've already lost a half a pound. I can't find it, you guys. Can't fucking find it. I can hear whizzing, and it sounds like it's coming from this motherfucker. <laughs> About to open my other vacuum pressure tester. Fuck it. I just used this thing, though, and it worked fine. I mean... But, we have a spare. Thank you, Rob Weaver. I believe that's who got this one for me. When my other one went to shit. Uh, is this the new one? I don't think it is. Um, no, it's not. It's the defective one. I don't know where the new one is. I thought I maybe gave it to Jason. Here's my leak down tester. Ah, fuck me, you guys. I'm just ready to call it a day. I really am. Just ready to call it a day. We've lost a pound. I hear it, damn it. I fucking hear it. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Where are you? Why are you hiding from me? I can 100% hear this bitch whizzing. Okay, we're gonna have to go drastic measures. We're gonna pump this up to like 9 or 10 fucking pounds. Okay, now I hear bubbles forming somewhere. Why can I not fucking find this? I'll bet you it's on this side of the goddamn fucking seal. I fucking hear it. God damn, this is crazy. Oh, there it is. Fuck. There you guys go. Our fucking impulse boot. Where I tell you guys these leak all the time. There it is, okay? There it is. Now it doesn't want to present. Go fucking figure. There it is. It's hard to see. On the other side of our impulse boot. Look back here. Right there is bubbles. Okay. Right down here. Okay. It's so hard to see. Zoom you guys in. Let's see if I can get it showing better for you. Frustrating though. Because I still. It means I have to take the whole fucking motor off. See all the bubbles up there, all the way around our impulse boot. See them forming. Uh, right there. See it? Right there. It's just not blowing bubbles like big bubbles. But that's where it is. So again, I hope you guys can see it. Right there. And down there. Down there is not as easy to present, but that's where it's fucking leaking. <sighs> trying to give you a better... I'm trying to get it to blow bubbles better. Yeah, you guys can see it fine. At least on the top you can. So that's it. He's got two saws that need rebuilt. I don't know what to charge him for that. On this one, uh, I'm trying to think. The newer 170 setup. <laughs> Yeah, the intake boot is really, really hard to do um, without taking the motor off. But the motor is already sealed individually, so we don't have to split the motor. But, I mean, I feel like this fucking crankshaft, all this oil over here, I feel like this crankshaft seal at running is leaking when it gets to running temperature, probably. Look at all the bubbles that are building up. 
But look how long that took me to find that air leak. That's the fucking extent I go to, you guys. That's the extent I go to because I don't want to be accused of doing somebody dirty or trying to say they need all this and all that and all this on their saw and them thinking I'm just trying to make money. My neighbor saw fucking leaks and I went through all this hell and frustration and overwhelmingness because I knew, I knew there was an air leak somewhere, okay? I could have just got this saw running and it might have run fine for him and cut fine until it blew up from the air leak, but I don't do that shit. I don't believe in that shit. So anyways, that's going to be it for this one, neighbors. Uh, I got to see what my neighbor wants to do. Try and find another box because I'm out of boxes and bins and everything else. And then the next video, I'm going to try and get into his MS-250 even though I really don't want to. Be kind to one another. Everyone's facing a battle, you guys. Hashtag persevere, right? Buy my chit. My uncle needs to have meds every month. Love you guys. Even though I suck at it.